Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Battle of Ontario Hockey Podcast, featuring a Senators fan and a Leafs fan. We're here to talk about your two favorite teams, the rest of the NHL, local hockey, hockey all around the world, and to bring back memories from your favorite hockey teams and players. If you love the Leafs, sends b sends NHL, or any other hockey, including the late Belleville Bulls, you are going to want to tune into our podcast. The gloves are off, the buckets are spinning, let's get the chirps flying. Welcome to the Boo Club! Hey guys, welcome to episode 37 of the Battle of Ontario Hockey Podcast. I'm Flem, he's Brokes, and uh, we got a bit to talk about today, uh, so we're going to talk about the Leafs. The Blue Jays are back, but to start, Brokey, I just want to talk about uh, one of our main par- partners, a guy that's been with from the start, uh, Chris Rashad from uh, from Tweed Home Hardware. Guys, if you're if you're looking for any building supplies, uh, any furniture, wood, lumber prices are coming down, give Chris Rashad a call. When we reached out to him and said, "Hey, we're looking to do something to put underprivileged kids into sports," Chris was one of the first guys to jump on and say, "You know, I just want everyone to have equal opportunities." And we're really big believers here that in the buy local movement. So if you're in the Tweed area, Madoc. Check out uh, Rashad's Home Hardware in Tweed. Thanks again, Razzy. We really appreciate it. Razzy signed up, Chris Rajat. Everybody, a lot of people know him as Razzy. And, and his team over in Tweed, they signed up for a year uh, with us because that's how dedicated they are and that's how much, you know, they want us to have success. And if we have success, everybody has fun. Not only that, most important thing is our goal, which is to help get kids in sports who can't afford it. And we're on our way there, guys. So thanks again to, uh, to one of our... Awesome sponsors, um, Chris Rajat, Rajat's uh, Home Hardware and Tweet. Yeah, Perks, how's it going, bud? How are you feeling this week? I'm doing all right. Um, uh, you know, well, I was going to talk about my back, but I'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, it's been hot. It's been hot doing asphalt, so me and my guys. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it's been a funny week. You know, we just talked. You know, I, ju- I wanted to talk about this right away because we, we you and I just talked about what we're going to talk about on the podcast, and we didn't even bring this up. And I'm surprised because I've gotten chirped about it the last few days. So, uh, vice president or president of hockey operations or however you want to call it, yeah. Pierre McGuire with the Ottawa <laughs> Senators. Um, so I'm actually surprised that you haven't given me some more jabs on this over the, over the week. Um, but anyways, uh, when I got the first message from a friend, I asked him, is this a joke? Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. So anybody that, you know, we all watch hockey and majority of us probably hate Pierre Maguire. He's annoying as fuck. He is. I can't stand the guy. Like I remember posting things on Facebook years ago when he was with TSN and just, can there be a Pierre Maguire mute button, you know? And, and he's just, he's one of those, like, he's one of those guys that are just, you know, you know, in hockey, you got a pest almost like an Andrew Shaw or a Matt cook, you know, some local guys, but they're always on you. You know, they're just attacking attack. And you're like, get this fucking guy off me. You know, it's almost yeah. like that, but in reporting, you know, Oh, this Jimmy Jean and, and he went to the school and he's like, he goes, he's almost like too far. Right. Like he's just, he feels like you he's know, trying to push your buttons, but like, he doesn't know he's really doing it. You know, like he just seems but like he, that but kind he's of guy. trying to like, it's like, he's trying to impress you every day. Like, Oh, yeah. you know, uh, this guy, his father, Jimmy John. And uh, you know what? Uh, he went to Harvard 1979. And I bet you that's where, you know, they can see that their son <laughs> and this son went to this one. Oh, his grandfather went here. Oh, his friends with Billy Bob and uh, but, holy fuck beer. Anyways, here's the thing. I've done some thinking of it. Do I like the decision when you first hear it? No. Like, fuck, why do we got to have this dweeb a part of our our organization? When you look into it, though, this guy eats, sleeps, lives, and breathes hockey. That's all he does. He's almost like a Craig Button. A lot of people don't like Craig Button, but he's way more annoying. No no question of it. If he stays out of the media, which I probably don't think he's going to do, he's probably going to be in it more than we want to, to hear him. But... Maybe he can help them in a sense of, of drafting, even though they're already really, really strong in that situation with, with drafts and stuff. So I'm trying to stay as positive as I possibly can. I don't want to hear from the guy, but I think he does put a I, I shouldn't say I think. I know he puts a lot of effort. He scouts games every day. Um, you know, he's big in that sense. So I think he can bring some attributes to the sense. 
but it's kind of in a in a place where they're already good. They're one of the best in the, in the league, I would say, as far as drafting goes. You know, out you know out from other um, from you know kids, not uh, not NHL scouts or pro scouts. I don't. I think they need a lot of help there. So maybe he can help in that situation. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not 100 agreement with everybody they brought in and players they brought in from an NHL or pro level. Some I have, some I haven't. But the kids, I am. So hey, maybe he's going to do that. Um, you know, chirp away, Flem. Let's hear what you got to say. Well, I think the first thing he's probably right up Eugene's alley. He probably signed for like a Canadian Tire gift card and like some pretzels or something like that. Like, <laughs> that's probably the only reason he's there. He probably signed for like you know ten thousand dollars a year or something like that, and he gets free season tickets for his family. So, <laughs> congratulations, Ottawa. I mean, you got uh, you got a great A guy. Too bad Dion Phaneuf wasn't there. He did be yelling oh, double yeah. Dion the whole time. You remember that in the World Juniors? Where, oh yeah, that was awesome. I think I mean, it's it, the best it pretty- double Dion was born and. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, I, he's an ass kisser. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, the thing is though, is, is he was with Pittsburgh when they won the Stanley cup in 92, I think it was. Um, and he has been offered other jobs by other organizations. Right. I believe he was offered. Um, I forget who it was. It might've been Minnesota or somebody like that, uh, a two or three year deal for GM. But apparently he told NBC at the time, this is a couple of years ago, that he wouldn't go and leave them unless it was for a four-year deal or more. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm told. Um, so now I guarantee he doesn't have a four-year deal. The reason why the changes is NBC isn't hosting hockey anymore. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of lost their job or he would have had to go to another another platform. So obviously, you know, why not quite a few jobs over the years. Like I'm, I'm, he was one of those guys that he could have been in, in a, you know, he could have been hired by a team sometime. It just, I think finding the right position, and he's probably happy doing doing commentary, right? Like that'd be a pretty sweet gig if you're a hockey guy, just sitting because he's always between the benches, right? So I mean, imagine that seat going around and watching hockey games and just sitting between the benches. Like I don't know, I just you know I think you're right. NBC is probably laying laying people off now, and uh, you know it was just it was just the right time for him. So I don't know. I don't think he's gonna have too much of an impact on the team. I still think the centers will find a way to uh, to muck this up. You know they do have some good young kids, but it seems like Eugene's trying to trying to prove he's not so cheap. So I assume. Brady will probably get like a ten million dollar deal here, and uh, you guys be maxed out on cap wide just like Leafs soon. So we should talk about that while we're here because we haven't talked about my sentence much. It's been all Leafs. So maybe we'll get to that. Just one last thing. I am kind of surprised in the situation because I don't think he took anybody's job over. Is this a new job that was brought in? So why is you know it's surprising that Eugene's hiring people? Now here's the other thing: Is he kind of going to be the voice of Eugene? That wouldn't surprise me. You know, so pick someone like Pierre. Hey, listen, you can do all this. You can help with scouting, but you're going to be my voice. And maybe he's trying to get away from the hockey. I don't know because you know Eugene's got a bad rap from saying dumb things and doing dumb things (laughs) and being you know just there's been a lot of stuff. Maybe that's the situation to go along with what you just said. Is we haven't talked about this yet, but. uh, Brady Kachuk signing, um, you know, for me as a fan, and I don't know you like him too. I want to see him in seven years. Um, I don't want to Why overpay him. I don't want to, I don't want to, can we go eight? Okay. Eight years. Yeah. We can go eight. That's right. So, but I don't, I don't want to overpay him. I don't want, like, he's not worth $11 million for eight years. No question. But I don't want to go three years at 7 million. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the rumor is they're talking two or three years and I'm going, fuck. So I don't like that idea. But I mean, I think they got to try and sign him long term if they can. What what you, what's your thoughts? Oh yeah, I think for sure you got to sign him long term. Like I think you know fourth overall pick, and uh, you know he really fell bottom at that spot. Like that's a that's an unreal spot to get him. Like honestly, he's probably the best player of that draft class right now because I think that was the uh, the Dalene draft where Dalene went first overall. Like I'd take if you were, if Buffalo were to call Ottawa right now, would you take Dalene for Brady Kachuk? I don't think so. Not in a million was years. Was it the Dalene would... one? There was yeah. a, there. Oh, there was another the guy one for sure. Who went second then? It was the guy for the Rangers, wasn't it? Um, Kako? No, that wasn't that one. No, it wasn't Kako. There was another year R- Russian guy. And then Kakinami was third, which, hey, Kakinami scored some big goals in the playoffs this year, but he was also a healthy scratch. And he does not put an imprint on a game that Brady Kachuk does. I guarantee if you're Montreal Canadiens, 100% of the time you're going and you're taking you're taking Kachuk at three instead of Kakinami. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? Oh, yeah. For sure. 100, 100 times out of 100. There's no question about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and even though he, you know, good, but at the same time, that's tough on Cockney because Brady Kachuk's obviously, you know, proven himself. And it's not that Cockney has, he's still a young guy. And I think he's still going to be good with Montreal. And he scored some big goals this playoffs. He had some good points. Yeah. You know, he was a healthy scratch to start and at the end. But, but I still think, you know, he's going to be a good player. But uh, yeah, I really want to see Brady Kachuk. I, I think right away he's the captain. I know there's a lot of Ottawa fans that are, 
torn between Shabbat and Kachuk. I just like what Kachuk brings. He brings the team into the game every day. Shabbat is more of that secondary leader, um, you know, where he's not going to fight, but he does so many important things. He plays the most minutes. I think he was one of the most minutes in the NHL last year. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he, he is a leader in a sense, but, you know, Brady Kachuk, and he's the type of guy that the Leafs are missing. And to go on with that, um, I think we can probably move on to Hyman, which is kind of a, a, what we talked. We talked about him before, but the rumor is now what you say, that he's gone, that the Leafs are done with him. Yeah, it sounds like it, it's so – from what I heard actually today, it sounds like the there are teams that have reached out to him to kind of acquire his rights, which essentially means they've broken off contract talks. Right? Like, they can't be anywhere close if that's what's going to happen. It sounds like – there's a ton of interest in them because I think I heard uh, Calgary, pretty much the Western, the Western Canada team. So Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver are kind of the front runners. Like they're all in play on it right now. And if you trade for the rights, that gives you the you can get, add that eighth year on, right? So I'm oh, 29 years old. So so if you're signing for eight years, like you're signing that guy till he's 37 years old. He's had some injuries in the past. Like that's a deal that might not look good. So I mean, yeah, it, it does sound like the leaks are done to them. I. I was kind of thinking at one point that there might be like a handshake deal where, you know, you get past the expansion draft, the least protect four defense, then Hyman comes back and signs a good deal. But if they're talking about trading his rights, I assume it's all done. Like I assume it's 99.9% over for the least of Hyman. Like I'm thinking, you know, you're going to, you're going to send him off to Western Canada and get a fourth or fifth round pick back for him. And you know, that's like a lottery pick for you. So I would assume Hyman's as good as gone. He's probably going to go sign like a seven or eight year deal, like five or $6 million. And, Obviously, Dubas and Leafs aren't going to pay that. It sounds like right now, like they'd have to, they'd have to shuffle some salary cap around and make that work. And I don't think that's in the plans right now. I, I would think, from my perspective, I would think that the reasoning for the eighth year is to put them on a, a longer contract for the same amount of money, which oh, yeah. could, would gives a bit more cap room. So it might yeah. save a team uh, five hundred thousand to a million a year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a whole extra player, right? You that's save a million a year. Mm-hmm. That's another. That's another. Well, Jason it's like Corey, Smith. That's like Corey Perry because Corey Perry signed a league min deal this year, like you know. If you can find yeah. a veteran like that to come in to anchor your second or third or fourth line, even like it's worth it to give them the extra year and just kind of bite that bull at the end, right? It's all about yeah. teams' windows to compete. Like a team that's going to bring in Hyman, they're thinking my windows now, like the next three to four years, they're not so much concerned eight years down the line, right? Like, you know, if it doesn't work out in year seven or eight, they'll bite that bullet then. But I mean, they'll take the uh, the upfront advantage with Hyman. When you get him in his prime, when you get a guy like Hyman, 29, 30, 31, these should be his best years. So I think you're going to get three year, good years out of him. It's just, uh, how bad does that deal look on the back end? I'm thinking. Well, I think, I think, yeah, I think we can get four years out of them. Um, one of the I things mean, you talked about was going to Western Canada and the, the two teams that I really think he would really be good with it, that would really give him a jump is maybe he can re- rejuvenate Calgary. I mean, Calgary just had a really I think Calgary's year. a landing spot for sure. You know, um, can he get some of these, these other guys going, right? Cause he played with Matthews. Maybe he plays with Monty because Monahan's numbers were terrible this year. Yeah. I know Johnny's were down too, but I mean, Monty's were really bad. You throw him maybe in there with, with Goudreau and or Monahan, maybe he's a spark, right? Get them the puck, get in the corners, you know, make things happen, get behind D, get forecheck. He does all that stuff. I mean, I think uh, that could be a good spot. And then Edmonton. I mean, Edmonton, man, you got a guy like uh, uh, McDavid. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to play with McDavid, but he could play with Dry Seidel or even just be a leader on a third line, like lift that oh, yeah. third line up, right? Like so many different spots he could go into. Yeah. Um, or even if they put Dry Seidel and Matt McDavid together, then you got a guy like him on the second line. Yeah. So, um, is he worth six million times eight years? No, but is he worth four, four or five million times eight? I mean, depends on your window and if you got the cap room. Yeah. Um, I would pay him a couple. I would pay him three years times five. I think I'd give him that. I, th- I really think oh, he's. I'd give him four there. times five easy. Like I'd probably give Even him four times five. Yeah, there you go. The, but yeah, sounds like he wants somewhere near six million. So he probably wants something near six six. And other teams are going. We well, can't give you six six, but we'll give you that same amount of money in seven or eight years right and and you can't and as a Leafs fan like you can't blame the guy like I wouldn't ask anyone to take a haircut like if everyone on the team is you know if you're going to do like the Boston Bruins model where like it seems like everyone's on just like a steal of a deal there like the precedent has to be set by someone and in Toronto it wasn't set by the big guys right so why are you going to ask a guy like Zach Hyman who probably thinks hey I'm more valuable than William Nylander like I am I am a better player than William Nylander for this team why am I going to take less money than him when no one else took less money. Like, it'd be different if everyone else took a million or two less. Then maybe you're willing to say, like, okay, yeah, the boys are invested. So am I. I'm in. But, I mean, hey, big boy, you know, big boy's got big boy problems, right? I mean, this is a world where you need to make money. So, 
this is his big chance to cash in. He's had two or three great years in a row. Go make your money, man. Like, go go hit it now. It kind of reminds me of like the the is it Owen Powers, the first overall, the projected first overall pick, that he might not come to Buffalo, or is kind of yeah. trying to like steer his way back to college. Like, man, go get your money. Like, don't go back to fucking college. Go get that ten million dollar deal and and just take the money and run. Like, that'll save you your whole life. It's time to look after yourself in that instance. And I love I love the examples of how you said Toronto the, the big boys didn't take it and and at the end of the day you know we've already talked about this a million times but it started with Tavares well it actually started with Willie you know and then obviously Matthews and Marner and it's just it's 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 a mess that they got themselves in at such a young age for their team right like they haven't won anything and they're already in this mess so it's it's difficult but uh, we'll see what happens we got lots on the go so uh, Tarasenko has requested a trade. Yeah, so it sounds like Tarasenko wasn't happy with how his uh, how his medical situation was handled. So I think he's had four surgeries on his shoulders in the last like three years, I think. And I think it got to a point where on the first the first time they went in, they didn't fix the problem, and it was a it was a blues doctor, from what I understand. Like like it wasn't a an outside physician. So it sounds like they went in there and fixed up something that wasn't even the main source of the problem. And then he gets hurt, you know, a few months later and has to go back on a knife and lose himself another six months, right? So I think. I think the, the, the nagging injuries issues have just kind of led to some hostility there. And it gets to a point, like, if you can't trust the team and you can't trust your employer, like, it's time to move on, right? So I think that's the best outcome for both parties here. Like, if he's not happy because, you know, he wasn't looked after medically, I mean, it's time to go. And say what you will, he may not be the same player he wasn't. Honestly, he's probably not that great of a player anymore because Tarasenko was all about his shot, right? And if he doesn't have that shoulder and his shoulder going, he's no longer the sniper he is. He's not as effective as a player as he once was. So, I mean... Yeah, that trade the him. biggest thing, the thing, the thing that pissed him off the most was he want when uh, Petro law left, he wanted to be the captain. Was that it? Yeah. He, oh, yeah. He was pissed. They even said yeah. it. It was all over the news that mm-hmm. he said, "I wanted to be the captain. Why couldn't I be the captain? I was long. I was here longer than um. Uh, well, who's the captain there? Um. Uh, I don't remember Tom Andrew now. Oh fuck! I got his picture in my frame. Played for Buffalo. <laughs> Played for the Sabers. What a cup. Was a uh, Colin Smythe winner, I think. Oh, uh, O'Reilly, O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah, O'Reilly. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, they yeah, and I think that was a good choice by them. I'm not saying they shouldn't have taken O'Reilly for the for the uh, story for the brain fart guys, but uh, <laughs> but for for the the captain, I think it was. But at yeah. the same time, you got a guy like Tarasenko that's been there longer. You know, um, was their lead was a leader and points for years and everything like that and i think it kind of stirred him up a bit and i think that's probably started it but he maybe was already getting pissed because of the doctors and because of the injuries and the way they've handled it you know yeah. there's always so many levels to, to to so many things so yeah you know what if you're not happy and that's the same thing in life you're not happy with your job do something do something about it don't fucking yeah. complain go get another one it might take you a year or two to switch but do something about it like you say you want to get paid get paid you know yeah. like don't fuck around. It, 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 you know, there's no sense complaining unless you're going to do something about it. And then, I, you I know, know so many guys that complain. So. I know so many guys that complain about their job for like seven, eight, nine, ten years. Like it's like every two weeks, like I'm going to get another job. I'm another job. A decade later, you're still there, right? So I mean, like they don't do that about bullshit. It. Like if you're not happy, if you're not happy in St. Louis, it's time to go. Like tell them I'm I'm not playing here anymore. So trade me, or I'll just sit out. I mean that's what it is. If you're not happy, it's time to go. Enjoy yourself. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, look, yeah. Trade me right fucking now. Okay, okay. Hang <laughs> trade me. Trade me. What do you say? <laughs> hang up. <laughs> hang up. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> they brought their fucking toys with them. <laughs> Give me a great board, Lawrence. And none of that stinking root beer. Oh, that's such a good movie. Yeah, oh, I love man. that movie. Yeah. First time I ever saw that movie was at your house. We were like fucking eight years old, and your dad yeah. put it on. It was <laughs> one of your birthday parties. I was like, what is going on? There's titties. <laughs> You know, whatever, he's sitting there laying with it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fucking awesome movie, man. What? A, oh, I love the sayings in that. Oh, I know, she's, a, she's a no, she's a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Gordy Howe album. I, I think the Gordy Howe album came up the second one, too. Like, awesome. That was the second one, though. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the second one. Remember they won the lottery? Yeah. <laughs> they won the lottery or whatever. Holy fuck. Then they bought the team at the end or something. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's so. Those movies are hilarious. I love Slash Rock. That came out in the seventies, and late. Um, great, Gobble Bulls. Great, Larry Mavity was in the movie. Yeah, uh, I think he was on the uh, the other. The, what what was that he team was, called? He was Doctor Hook, Phil McCracken in it. Uh, the Charlotte, the Charlottesville or Charlottetown something. I don't know. Yeah, the, the big goon team at the end. He was the, he was the captain. Of the big goon team and Doctor Hook. Oh, was he the captain? He was yeah, the captain. 
Wasn't part of the movie filmed in Peterborough? I think it was, yeah. I'm pretty sure there was a, a couple games or a game or something filmed at the Peterborough Arena because they have a stage. Yeah. We'll have to confirm that. Maybe maybe somebody will tell us. But a funny, uh, thing about the, a funny thing about the movie, too, is we said you watched first time. I'm pretty sure, like, because we did watch my birthday party, I'm pretty sure my dad showed it me, like, two days before, like, just, just to, like, celebrate my birthday. And I must have watched that movie, like, fucking 20 times in the next, like, like three days before I came over. Fuck. I love that movie. It was so old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Hilarious. <laughs> I love those movies. What do you guys do? What are you going to do? We're putting on the foil every day. Yeah. You got to do it. <laughs> Holy Christ. Different times, bud. Different times. Anybody <laughs> hits me, I'm going to piss myself. <laughs> He's just pissed, drunk, loaded. <laughs> Buddy goes and drills him. <laughs> oh, man. I love those movies. Anyways, yeah. where were we at? Another thing I wanted to bring up here is there's a couple more guys that are looking to uh, to get out of their teams. Well, maybe not looking to get out, but Gabriel Landeskog, the captain in Colorado. It seems like him and Colorado aren't even close on a new deal right now. And really? you know Joe Sackick, man. Joe Sackick is notoriously notorious play for playing hardball people. He is not going to overpay. So if Tarasenko thinks he's going to get that extra 500K, extra million or million and a half, I got another, you know, it's not coming your way, bud. So if you want to stay in Toronto, take, you know, take the sweetheart. Toronto, he is in Toronto, bud. Or sorry, Colorado. <laughs> I wish he was in Toronto. But uh, take, take, you know, if you're, if you're not going to get the deal you want, you might as well just, you know, go to market and, and wrap it up. I mean, that's it. I don't think Sackett's going to overpay. And I don't think it matters who you are. I don't think Sackett will overpay. So it sounds like Landis Scott might be gone. And then Seth Jones, too. Seth Jones has said he's not re-signing with Columbus. Uh, he, he does still have one year left, but he said he's not re-signing as a UFA. So, uh, you know, it's time to, for, for Columbus to unload that assets and, and recoup some picks. So, man, Seth, two great players, but... Seth Jones has got to be one of the biggest different makers, difference makers in the NHL when he's on. And I think every team in the league should be in on Seth Jones. He, Seth Jones, he's just unbelievable hockey player. So two things. I want to go back to, uh, to Landis Scott. So you talked about the Leafs and how the Leafs haven't signed anybody into some team deals, what we'll call yeah. them team. Deals. Now McKinnon is on a team friendly deal. He was signed when he, the year before he really turned it up, yeah. they got lucky. But he's also said that he will sign again for a short for a less money to have a better team. He yeah. has said that publicly. His next deal will be less than he can make because he wants to win a cup. Yeah. So there the president has been set has been set. So your thoughts, will Landeskog follow suit? And or are they just that far away that he'll come up, but he needs to get up closer to where he should be? You know, I'm Look, Landis Cog's a UFA. I think he's as good as gone. When a guy like – when Nathan McKinnon comes out and says, hey, I'm going to take a deal, and I know Landis Cog's the captain, but McKinnon is the best player on that team. When McKinnon comes out and says, I'm going to take less, that's your example for the rest of the team to fall in line. And if you don't want to fall in line at that point, you might be gone. So Landis Cog's a UFA here, and he is a great player. Someone is going to pay that guy 7 or $8 million a year. He's going to score a bunch of goals, but I don't think it's going to be Colorado. I think Zach is going to hold firmly. Like he's going to hold the line at like seven or seven and a half. And uh, if he wants to take it, that's up to him, right? But I think the pressure comes down from McKinnon. When McKinnon says, I'll take less because I want to be here, everyone else has to, has to follow suit. And, and if you're not willing to, you know, you can, you can find someone else to come. Colorado is a great place to live, man. Like, I would love to live out west there, you know, in the, in the mountains. You know, you, no one's really bugging you, but you got a great team, a great GM. And you've got legitimately got a shot to win in Colorado for the next five, six years. Like, that's going to be a great team, maybe even more. Colorado might be the team that's set up best for the next decade, I would think. Yeah, I would agree with that. I love, you know, especially with Vicar, you know, just getting – he's not even close to his prime yet. Yeah. Uh, who else? Byron Bowen. Is it Gerard? Bo, is it Bowen? Is that what you Bowen, said? yeah. Bowen, yeah, the, the defenseman there. Um, but uh, the other thing here is uh, – the other point I want to make is these guys, you know, maybe the last five years, you could, you could go, you know, to free agency and sign a big deal. The thing is, is the, the, those deals aren't going to be near as available as they once were. Yeah. Two things. The cap is staying the same. Mm -hmm. So because of that, guys are, the teams are going, well, the cap's not going up. So we can't keep spending more and more. The second thing is most, a lot of teams are already close to the cap. And even if they lose guys, they might have to replace them. But you know, th that room to sign guys isn't like it was. Mm -hmm. So somebody that two years ago, three years ago, might've got off a contract at 6 million and then they, they, they go to free agency and the, you know, the chance to sign eight is pretty good. It might not be, it might only be six and a half to seven now. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Oh, oh it's sure. going to be interesting to see. Like the Taylor Hall thing was one of was a weird con, a weird deal last year. I thought as well to sign a Buffalo for a one year deal on that, and I think he was one of the guys that he thought he was going to sign for more. Mike Hoffman was really weird. I thought he kind of thought he might sign for more. There was somebody yeah. else. You know, they just thought, and I know it's COVID and stuff, but we're still in that same thing, right? And Harry the, did it like Harry was like a tra- like a training camp invite. Like, there's tons of good yeah. players that are just look looking for a contract, let alone a big one. Like, if you push a guy like Hoffman or Perry, like, man, they'll sign for you know a million, even less if you push them that far. So you're right. It just it's just a, a situation where I think two years ago everyone's planning the caps going up this much, right? So I'm willing to overpay that extra, you know, seven to ten percent of my next deal. Because the cap's going to go up 10% in the next four years. Well, guess what? That cap is stuck. And that's going to squeeze the bot- the mid and bottom tier guys right out, right? Because the big boys are still going to get their money. Like, if, if the big boys want their money, as shown with the Leafs, if they say, hey, this is where I'm at, like, this is a line in the sand, they're going to get it. Like, I think that's just, the, that's just what's going to happen. And then the third, fourth line guys, you know, your fifth, sixth defenseman, your fourth and seventh defenseman, those are the guys who get squeezed out and they either have to leave and find a new deal or they have to sign for like a million and a million and a half. Like there's tons of guys on great value contracts right now, just because the big boys are going to get their money and they're just going to squeeze the little guys out. Yeah. So, and then the other thing I want to talk about was Columbus blue jackets. Is there a team that's probably more like besides Ottawa shipping everyone out? It's like, everybody wants to leave Columbus. Yeah. Like if we've seen a team, everybody's left. Everybody, no one signed there. I mean, they lost Bravosky, uh, Duchesne and, um, who was the other one? The other the guy from Ottawa. Name. You traded back for him this year. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. Hoffman, not Hoffman. No, no, no. Not his angle. There was another one. Oh. Um, anyways, they lost three main guys. Oh, who well, they lost Dubois, too. They're, they lost Dubois, so he wanted yeah, out. That was after the fact. I'm talking free agency that year. Panarin. Oh. Panarin. Yeah, yeah. Panarin. Yeah. Panarin, not unbelievable. They lost them all in the, first, in the same year because yeah. no one of them wanted to sign. You know, it's like – and nobody wants – and it's like there's a place for Liney to go because, obviously, I just – I think that guy's got unbelievable talent, and I think he's got one of the best shots. He can, I think he has the potential to be an Ovechkin. I just don't think he has the drive or the care. I really yeah. don't. I just don't see it. You can fucking play the odd game, but you're going to try one out of three games, and if it just doesn't work out, you're going to pout. Man, you're going to find yourself out of the NHL faster than you think, buddy. You know what? So, And the second thing with that is I didn't come on here to chirp. Liney, but you know, Seth Jones is an amazing player and he's seeing it. Everybody's leaving. And I always thought for years that it was Torts, but Torts is gone. Torts is contract. They've given it up. Yeah. He's not resigning. So you know what? He's gone. So I don't know if it's the whole management. I don't know if it's everything, but you know, for years, I think it was Torts and Torts is a, a coach that some guys love him, but he's, he's almost like the seventies type of coach where he's so hard on you and he's the biggest asshole ever, but that's back then. That's all they had. And that's yeah. all he knew. So you had to listen to it because the mm-hmm. next fucking team had the same type of coach. Yeah. Now sure. there isn't those coaches anymore. Mike Babcock. I mean, look what he did in Toronto and they're all over them. All he, he said to write a list and, you know, blah, 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 and play some games, which I don't agree with, but, but at the end of the day, you know, how many guys were doing that over the years in the seventies? Like just, so I just feel like times have changed and, I feel like Columbus is a big mess. They went for it that one year and they actually beat out Tampa Bay a couple of years ago before Tampa Bay started winning cups. They went for it. Remember they traded all these guys. They brought Deshane in, Dezingle. They brought a bunch yeah. of guys in. They did win a playoff series, but it screwed them now because now they've lost a bunch of draft picks, right? So, and now they got guys leaving, like Jones wants to go. I mean, for me, that's just a disaster written all over it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think the biggest thing, sorry, I just want to circle back to the contracts too. The, the biggest thing with contracts this year, though, is, is Seattle. The Kraken coming in, like, th- that's a team that can have $40 million in cap space. I haven't heard how much they're going to spend in the cap, but they might be the guys that give those, uh, you know, those Landis Cogs the type of deals that they want. So Or Seth Jones. Yeah, next year, but let's circle Good back point. to Columbus here. They do have three first-round picks this year, so if they deal off Seth Jones, and look, you're going to get a haul for Seth Jones. Like, you're going to get someone's best prospect, probably two best prospects and a first-round pick. They're set up nicely. They can just draft well. Like, they got three firsts so this year. Who did they get the get first six round? Good from? What's that? Because the last two drafts, they haven't had many picks. So, I wonder no, how they got the, those two. You're right. They haven't had many the last two, but this draft, they have a, they have a shit ton. They got oh. – I think they got three thirds and – I don't know. I, I know they at least have a couple third and fourth round picks too, but I know they have three firsts because they got one for Savard, and then they got the, the Felino, Felino deal. So – they have three That's right. first this year. Oh, what a deal that was. At least got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and and they can do something with those picks, right? Like you can I maybe with that first rounder for the Leafs. You can maybe you can maybe flip those picks for someone good, or you know, 
I don't know. I, I, they are in trouble right now, but I, I think, think they can turn it around quick, but they have to draft well. That's the key. If think, they draft they well, rebuild. they're out of this mess in a couple of years. I think they got to rebuild. I think they're, I think they're well, three or four years away from even having a sniff at the playoffs. I think that's that, well, I think they're at that stage where everybody's wanting to leave. So I mean. get it. They're gone. So rebuild, regroup, get your whole, you know, the whole organization back on track, you know, and, you know, get a proper coach in there that everyone's going to like and grow with and boom, kind of like what Ottawa's done. Uh, there's lots of teams. Um, Colorado did it. You know, Toronto's done it. You know, yeah. Toronto's had a little bit of, of up and downs, but you know, they drafted a lot too. Right. So what I just meant is that like with all those picks in two years, they could be at Ottawa where Ottawa is right now. Like if they draft well and they get six know, good like young two players, years, like, two years, they could be where Ottawa is right now, but they say. have to draft well. I would say in three or four years, not two, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so, uh, anyway, I heard you had a little bit of back injury, bud. Do you want to talk about your back or what? Back's been bugging me. So I can't wait. Um, I get to go to the chiropractor, Benny, BIHC, Belva Integrated Health Center, uh, next Wednesday. So, you know, this will be on tomorrow, Saturday. This will be Saturday. So next Saturday, I can't wait to talk to everybody and have a better back because of Ben and his staff. They are phenomenal. I'm honestly looking so forward to going there. So if you have any pain, especially back pain, shoulder pain, legs, you name it, you got to see Belva Integrated Health Center. They are the number one chiropractor, physiotherapies, massage therapists, anything to help with the body, go to them. They're on uh, Bell Boulevard, the end of Bell Boulevard, past the casino, just before you get to Walbridge Lewis Road on the left side, just before the OPP Center. They're great. Honestly, look them up on Google, guys, BIHC um, or Facebook. Phenomenal staff. they got a great big staff, um, and they know what they're talking about. They don't just come in and you go through it, and you put a machine on you, and they crack you, and then say, see you later. I've uh, seen you in three days. Give me your money. They're not like that. They'll say, listen, you you got to be here this you know for the next month or maybe the next two weeks. You're you're hurt. You got to get in here three times. If they don't think it's that bad and they just need to readjust you, or maybe it's just massage, they're going to be honest. They're not going to screw you around. And that's the best thing about it. Not only that, I've been to many chiropractors in the area. These guys are by far the best that I've been to anyways. So you know what? Um, I know I have a bad back. I work outside. I'm using it every day and I really have to be looked after. And these guys do a phenomenal job. So to Ben, his staff, BIHC, you have problems. You have, uh, sorry, soreness anywhere, any pain, go see a BIHC, check them out on Google, check them out on Facebook. And thanks again, guys, for our sponsor, our partnership. They partnered with us for the, for the remainder of the year. Um, so we really uh, appreciate that. They're into help. If you're into help, you own a small business, get a hold of us. Part of the proceeds, part of everything we make, part of it, we're going to go to a kid's fund to help kids get in sports who can't afford it. So maybe that leads us to our next point, Fleming. Our next point. We have some tournaments coming up. That's where we make a lot of our money, which helps for our fund. Um, baseball. So we are looking for – it's next weekend, next Saturday, July 24th and 25th. I got my dates right, Flum? Yeah, you got them right, yeah. Okay. So we are looking for some single players. So if you're a single or, you know, you got a friend or two that want to play, but they don't have a team, get a hold of us. Pay for sports at hotmail.com. Check us out on Facebook. Send us a message. Okay. Um, that's our partnered company. That's who runs the tournaments. We also have road hockey, which will be on August 28th yep. at Maranasta church. Uh, we've made a slight change. We're going to give it some more time. We've got kids eight and up and an adult. It's going to be tons of fun. Boys, girls, whoever wants to play, you guys can play. A winning team, if you're the three kids divisions, everybody, if you win, you're going to get to go to a Belleville Sens game. We might even have some prizes, some surprises for you. You might even get to meet some Sens or, or meet the mascot or whatever the case. We're going to try and make as best we can. We're going to give away a bunch of Belleville Sens swag. Boo Club swag, pay it forward swag. There's going to be a ton of stuff. We're going to have other giveaways. The adult side of the, of the road hockey for the adult teams, um, it's sponsored by Rondo Glen Golf Course. So thanks again to them. And I'll get to them in a second. But before I do, if you win that tournament, as for the adults, or again, it's men and women, um, you get to go golfing for free as the whole team that wins. So I say there's 10 of us, you get to go. This is a four-on-four -four road hockey tournament. Um, you can have, what, seven to nine players on your team, and that will include a goalie. So it's up to you guys whether you're going to have seven, eight, or nine. Um, but it's going to be an awesome day, and it's August 28th in Belleville at Maranatha Church. Again, you want to get in. You want If you don't have a team but you're looking to play, get a hold of us. Ages eight and up. So if you're eight years old or you know someone's eight years old and up and loves road hockey, you got to get in. It's going to be a phenomenal day. 
And last thing, just to you, I'll let you go back, but just because I talk about Rondell Glenn, we have our golf tournament August 21st at Rondell Glenn. Our sponsorships are full. You still want to sponsor, but you can't get a hole. We might be able to help you out. We've got other people that are giving away, doing some giving away giveaways for us. Um, we are, we think we're pretty close to full as far as golfers, but we do have a waiting list. So if you want to get in and someone might cancel, get a hold of us. Fleming. Yeah, I'm just going to say for the road hockey in particular, and if you don't have a team, like if you don't have seven to nine guys, just shoot us an email and we'll get you on a team, guys. Like I think that's the main thing we want to do with this business is we want to get kids and adults back into sports. And I think that's the big thing we're, we're kind of seeing with baseball right now. Like I don't know how many messages I've got about the, the singles baseball team. Like I've probably got 50 messages. Just people say, hey, you know, I only have one or two people and I don't really play in a team, but I'd like to get back into it. And that's what we really want to encourage. Like we want people to get out, play sports. It's such a fun social thing. And that's kind of your group of people. So if you don't have a team, send us an email. We will get you on a team or we will get you on a team of single players. It's going to be tons of fun. Like you don't need to, like, it's hard to know 10 guys, especially want to come out and play and pay. Uh, that's kind of the problem we've run into is no one wants to pay to play. Right. But uh, yeah, if, if you want to jump on a team, let us know, we'll do whatever we can to help you because we want to make sure everyone gets into play. And uh, one thing I did want to say, Brokey, is when you're at Ben's next Wednesday, maybe we can hit up the casino on the way back because uh, that's what I was looking to do too. <laughs> And I like going to the casino when I'm away out of town. So I don't keep going back. I do want to add one thing in guys. So part of our thing is we want to give back to the community, right? We have a fun set up to get kids in sports who can't afford to play it. If you know somebody um, or, or you are them and you're listening and you're eight years old and up and you want to play in our road hockey tournament, but you can't afford it. It's between 25 to $30 a player, depending how much and that's tax included. You can't afford it. Get a hold of us. We'll get you in the tournament. We'll sponsor you. Pay it for sports, blue club sports. We'll help you out. If you, if you don't have the money and you can't get it, this isn't for everybody guys. This isn't for people that can play, but, but can pay, but don't want to pay. That's not for you. Don't waste this for people that honestly can't afford it. Their parents, maybe they're having a tough time because of Corona, the virus lost their job, whatever the case, it doesn't matter. And we're not going to tell anybody if that's the case, get a hold of us, pay it for sports at hotmail.com. Send us a message, go on our website, www.payitforwardsports.ca or Facebook message us, Pay It Forward Sports or even Boo Club Sports. Send us a message. We'll look after you. We'll make sure you get in. We want to be able to give everybody equal opportunity. Why? Because everyone can play. Right, Flem? Exactly. Yeah, that's the, uh, the slogan of Pay It Forward Sports. Not, that was really well said. I, I know I don't have anything to add, but it is completely confidential. Like, if you want, if you want to, you know, post them on Facebook and say, Hey, you know, pay it for it. Sports helped us. That's great. It'll help us. If you don't want to, no problem at all. Like it's, it's a hundred percent confidential. There's, there's no requirements at all. No requirements at all. So if you want to play and you can't afford to just get a hold of us, we'll help you out. And that's the bottom line because pay it for it. Sports said so. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright that. <laughs> finger, but that probably wouldn't look at when. Yeah. Um, Austin three sixteen says, I just, your bum. <laughs> uh, I don't think a lot of people that would listen probably clue in, but this is all nineties wrestling we're chirping about. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Fleming. There was something else next. Oh, so uh, I got a challenge for you, buddy. Okay. I think we should do a little spin off of a podcast. Why don't we go golfing at Rondo Glen, our home course, we'll call it the boo club yeah. sports, pay for sports course. And uh, we'll make some wagers and we'll do a live podcast. Maybe not next week because we've got our ball baseball tournament the next night, next day and weekend. But maybe the weekend after. What's that, buddy? That's what? Uh, the 30th of, Ju of July. 30th of July. Yeah, you got a bet. I'm free that day. Let's go out and see Ryan and Rondo Glenn. And, uh, and I'll say what Rondo Glenn, I was, there, I was there earlier this week. It has got to be one of the nicest courses in the Quinier. Like, I have never seen the place that nice. It you know all eighteen holes are, are rocking and ready to go. It's a great spot and uh, yeah, you got a bet, Brokey. So hold on, I just want to check something here because my phone is messing up. Okay. So uh, I'm on the wrong date. It is the thirtieth. I was yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So I got to get back to Zoom. Am I still on the camera? No, you're not. Sorry, guys. I'm working with my phone today. My uh, computer just didn't want to work with the internet very well. I'm back. <laughs> okay, I'm back, baby. Uh, so I got a challenge. Fleming's accepted it. July 30th, we're going to do a live podcast. It's going to be in and out. We'll do it through Facebook. We'll be betting. We'll, we'll do closest. We'll, we're going to do all our holes. So we have two close to the pins, two uh, longest drives. We'll be betting. Maybe we'll make some funny bets. Yeah. Um, 
and one of the longest drives is a happy Gilmore. Um, and then we have fastest hole. I don't know how we're going to do fastest hole, but I'm doing it. We're well, doing fast. There will be a foot race. race. Like we need two carts then or something. Oh yeah. Well, it's a par three. So <laughs> yeah. hopefully you don't, hopefully one of us doesn't die after, but uh, yeah. no, it's oh, hole uh, 17 on Rondo Glen is what it's set up for. Um, yeah. And we'll do some other stuff and we'll have some fun. I mean, we'll talk about the course. We'll talk about hockey. We'll talk about sports. Um, the other thing about sports. So, July 30th, make sure you check out Facebook, Boo Club Sports, because I'm going to be whipping this guy's ass <laughs> on the golf course. Um, by the way, he's been to the range about 56 times in the last two <laughs> weeks. I've been zero, and I have a bad back. So uh, I think the wagers are starting to get pretty even here, Fleming. They might be coming um, down a little bit, bud. I think, I think they are. So we'll, we'll make something fair. Um, yeah. But the next thing. We talk about sports. We want to, with hockey kind of dying off a bit, we're going to, we may split up this podcast a bit and do a little bit of sports. The biggest thing, we had some awesome, huge news today. The Toronto Blue Jays, I believe as of July 30th, yep. will be allowed to play in Toronto in front of fans. Am I right with that? You are correct. Yes, David. I think it's a 10 or 12 game homestand starting July 30th. And I think it's all but signed off on that the Jays are coming back to Toronto. And, uh, I, I would just listen to some stuff before, uh, before it came out because there was some controversy with the soccer league where, like, unvaccinated players couldn't come in. And it sounds like that's not going to be an issue for the Jays. So, like, even the unvaccinated players from the States are allowed in. And uh, the Sky Dome's going to be popping again. Like, man, oh, I love – oh, I miss baseball. I love – or the Rogers Center now. I shouldn't call it the Sky Dome anymore. It's a hard habit to break. It's the Sky Dome for life, brother. It's yeah. the Sky Dome. <laughs> yeah, so that place is going to be rocking. I'm so excited. And – uh Maybe I smell a boot club sports trip up to the, uh, the sky dome soon, buddy. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know what? We could have a lot of fun. Uh, we might even be able to tag up and get the live for today travel mixed in with the boot club sports mixed in with the pay it forward sports. And guess what? That means then if we make some profit, part of that money goes to the pay it forward sports fund. How much better is that? Hey, yeah. maybe we'll give away some jerseys. We'll get, we'll have some $17,000 drink beers at the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I just love it. You know, you go to the game and you complain. And then when you can't go to the game for two years, when now you're like, I can't wait to go to the Blue Jays game and spend $17 on a beer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it's so much fun. You know, uh, I know I took a bus, uh, obviously not last year, but the year before to the Blue Jays game through my other company, Live for Today Travel. And we had a blast. We didn't have a big group. Um, it was a beautiful day. And I know everybody on the trip had a lot of fun. Um, one shout out here. I know he watches a bit of our podcast. Jim McKay, a uh, good friend of the show, Billy McKay. It's his old man. Jim is a nut buyer. He's a beauty. Gotta love the guy. Anyways, maybe he'll come back with us. Um, and maybe we'll get him on the, the bus trip. And Billy too. Um, and maybe even... Uh, Billy Sun Blake there. Do you remember what we took? Because we took it when I was coaching the, the Royals baseball team. Remember. You came on that trip. But did Billy come on that trip too? I think Billy yeah, came. Me and Billy. Me yeah. and Billy. And then oh, I think I think Hawks said he was, like a beer and eating man. Yeah. I think Hawk said he was gonna come too, and then he found it was gonna be like two dollars of gas money to get to the bus. And he said, No, I can't do that. He fucking thought so <laughs> I love that you sure Bach, okay? Eh? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> but no, that oh. was that, uh, we were pounding the beers back that day. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. That was hilarious. And uh, Popovich was on the team there because I used to yep. coach him and Quinny yep. a couple years before, which was like peewee. Now yep. the kids played five years in the OHL. I know. Uh, Anthony Went Popovich. Mem Cop. So. Yeah, hell of a goalie. Uh, but that was that was a long time ago, man. That would have been seven, eight years ago, no? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I think it probably was, uh, I think it'd be like 2010, so maybe even more. Holy shit, was that long ago? No, yeah. it couldn't have been that long ago. No, yeah. That would have been after that because I didn't start coaching until – so 2011, I think. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. Somewhere in that range in the summer yeah. probably, but but it doesn't matter. But, no, it's funny you look, think it back, and, and I, I was pretty pumped when I heard the Jays. I'd like to go, and I, I think uh, I think we could have a lot of fun. We can maybe make some games with it, and uh, if anybody wants to have some adult beverages, that would be awesome too. Yeah, for sure. So, so you know check what? us out, That's guys. Boot Club Sports, we're sending a bus down to the Sky Dome. I don't know when, but uh, we'll set it up, and we're rolling. Fleming's, we're getting Fleming's credit card out. We're booking a bus. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're doing. It's on Fleming. It's free. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, but we, let's do it, buddy. Let's do it. We're challenging each other. Let's do it. We got lots on the go, guys. We got more. We are going to be releasing a couple more tournaments in the very near future. One of them might include ice, a puck, and a hockey stick in September. What is that, buddy? And then not only oh, announcing hey. more tournaments, you kind of hit us awesome. earlier. I think we're announcing some more podcasts. Uh, in the coming weeks too, as we kind of get to uh, maybe the pig skin and uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But we got big plans here at, at pay for sports and boot club sports, tons of stuff going on. 
uh, like like we said earlier. So we got uh, baseball next weekend, July 24th, 25th. Our uh, golf course or uh, our golf tournament, Rondo Glen Golf uh, Course, August 21st. And then our road hockey event, August 28th. Uh, that's going to be a great time too. Can't wait, buddy. Can't wait to see everybody out. It's going to be a blast. And because we're having so much success, we just keep looking into more tournaments. And not only that, guys, we know you love the prizes. We got a lot of prizes planned, especially for our golf tournament, for the kids that are road hockey. And we even think we got some really, really kick-ass big stuff coming in the very near future. So check us out on social media and especially on this podcast, the Battle of Ontario Hockey Podcast. Yep. So uh, that's it for today, guys. Check us out online, payitforwardsports.ca. Or send us an email, pay it for it, sports at hotmail.com. But, uh, Brokey, I got one question for you, buddy. Are you in? It's right here, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Club! <laughs>